Tony Lockett or Jason Dunstall? Michael Voss or Simon Black? Charlie Curno or Eric Hipwood? Jordan Degoe or Liam Ryan? Matthew Richardson or Dustin Martin? Whoever asked me that, I can't remember, but fuck you for posing this question to me. There was Argo Zero. What's going on, God Zero Nation? This is our God Zero, and today we do something that we've never done before on the channel. You've been asking in previous tipping videos that I've been doing for the AFL that you'd like to see more AFL based content come to the channel, and uh, exactly what we're going to do today. I'm certain most of you watching this video would be familiar with the concept of would you rather. You get given two scenarios, and you pick which scenario out of the two that you would prefer. What we're going to do today is we're going to do an AFL related would you rather video. A little while ago, I put out on social media that I was going to do a video like this and you guys reached out with some suggestions for questions. I've got them all written down and we're going to get to them today. But before we start, if you guys want to see more of this type of content, let me know in the comment section down below, as well as letting me know some questions that you might want to see answered for future AFL would you rather videos and then I'll take those comments and I'll chuck them in the next video and so on and so on Let's keep the ball rolling with this motherfucker. We'll just keep going with that all being said It's time to dive into these because some of these questions ladies and gentlemen are Very tasty if you see me kind of looking off that way. It's because I'm reading what's on the uh, What's on the good old notepad? Okay? Don't judge me. We're not even playing around. We're starting with a big big one here We've got Tony Lockett or Jason Dunstall. Huge. Because I love both of these players and what they did during their time within the AFL. I personally, when I played football, full forward, it makes sense. You put the big boy in the square and you just let him do his thing, am I right? But it was hard originally to split these two. I'm going to choose Tony Lockett and this is why. I feel that while Jason Dunstall kicked some more goals, played some more games, I feel he played in a team that was, I wouldn't say dominant, but they, they, they got the ball rolling. They were a consistent team. Tony Lockett, on the other hand, played in teams that there were, you know, they were a lot, lot like Jason Dunstall and Hawthorne are here and Lockett and where Lockett was at was down here. Like he had to grind for his ball. And whereas Jason Dunstall would set up other players and be a little bit selfless, Tony Lockett knew his range, so he would just go for goal. A beautiful shot on goal. I would argue Lockett crashed more packs and had better pack marks, whereas Jason Dunstall probably had cleaner hands all around. But I just loved the fear that Lockett could put into somebody in a game. Like, he was a big big man i've met tony lockett a few times um been fortunate enough to do so with my old man being associated with greyhounds and stuff and tony lockett does greyhounds so there's been a few times during you know doing our slips and training the dogs that we've kind of uh met each other and butt heads and all that kind of good stuff but definitely lockett for me if i had to pick charlie kerno or eric hipwood this one is straight cut i'm going charlie kerno I liken Charlie Curnow to Anthony Kudafides in many ways. I think he's more athletic. Unfortunately, we haven't seen much of him because he's been riddled with injury. But when we have seen him play, he gets up the ground. He puts in a lot of pace. He's a great shot on goal. And while Eric Hipwood is going to become a very dominant key forward, I mean, a lot of people are likening Hipwood to Lance Franklin, which I personally think is a bit of a stretch right now. But I can see where they're coming from. But when it comes to Kerno, I think his ceiling is a lot higher than what Eric Hipwood's ceiling is. And I just want to see Kerno come back and do some damage. I'm not even a Blues fan, but I just want to see Charlie come back. Michael Voss or Simon Black? Two players that, even though I'm a Richmond supporter, I loved watching these two players play. I'm going to go with Michael Voss. I think his rap sheet, his resume, whatever you want to call it, speaks for itself. Black is a phenomenal player, deserving to be in the Hall of Fame. But I feel Michael Voss was kind of, you know, Black's here, Voss is here. 
He was always a step ahead. Patrick Cripps or Marcus Bontempelli? And this one I've been thinking about for a while and I still can't work out which one. Both offer a lot. I feel, however, Marcus Bontempelli is the one I'm going to pick here. And I've got reason. I've got reason. I feel Patrick Cripps in a team would need to have other people around him to support him. Because even though he's an elite player, don't get me wrong, we've seen this year with Patrick Cripps kind of being behind the eight ball a little bit compared to what he can put out. And you Carlton supporting fans out there, you tell me. You tell me how you feel about Patrick Cripps because I know he's not playing to the best of his ability right now. Marcus Bontempelli, however, I feel he's got the ability even though he's playing in a team that has like the likes of Jack McRae and people that can support him. I think Bontempelli has the ability to bounce back and support himself. I think he's more versatile around the ground too. Patrick Cripps, I do don't think would be like a viable forward mid swap depending on where you needed him to play whereas Bontempelli you could pluck him up forward you can pluck him in the middle you can make him an outside runner and I think Bontempelli in that sense is a little bit more complete a player feel free to argue that with me in the comments down below because I know some of you will would you rather be coach of the Gold Coast Suns or the captain of Carlton coach of the Gold Coast uh, if you haven't seen um my rebuild of the Gold Coast Suns in AFL Evolution 2 uh, description down below. How's that for a plug? Greg Williams or Gary Ablett Jr.? I'm going with Jr. Once in a lifetime player and I'm going to uh, probably shock a lot of people with a pick later on with Gary Ablett Jr. as well. So uh, it's not the last time we've seen him pop up in this video. I can assure you of that. Chris Judd and Dennis Armfield or Josh Kennedy and Chris Maston, the Judd Kennedy trade. Obviously, Judd and Dennis Armfield going from West Coast to Carlton, and then Josh Kennedy and Chris Maston going from Carlton to West Coast. Um, Josh Kennedy and Chris Maston, 100%. Easy pick. Even though Juddy and Armfield were great players for Carlton, and Juddy brought a lot of leadership into that team, Josh Kennedy's gone on to win some Coleman medals. Chris Maston played a big part in the midfield when West Coast were winning grand finals. And Josh Kennedy and Maston went on to be premiership players. Juddy and Armfield didn't really amount to much at Carlton, which is a bit unfortunate. But if I had to pick two out of those four, yeah, it's definitely the Josh Kennedy and the Chris Maston. West Coast definitely won that trade. This is a direct Richmond-related one. There's going to be a couple of these coming up because a few of you know that I'm a big, passionate Richmond supporter. But would I rather two premierships in 2017 and 2019, so the two that Richmond have recently won, or one premiership in the late 90s when club stalwarts like Richo, Knights, Gale, Campbell, Daffy, Gaspar, etc. were playing? As much as I would love to have seen Richo be a premiership player I would rather the premierships in 2017 and 2019 prime Lance Franklin or prime Tony Lockett I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Lance Franklin only marginally and I only say that because Lance Franklin has the ability to get up the ground he is more athletic he is a freak of a player both of them are excitement machines but I think Lance Franklin when it comes to being in their prime I think if they had a shootout, Buddy would be ahead just. Just because I think he offers more as a complete player. Am I wrong? Duncan Callaway or Andrew Callaway? The Battle of the Brothers. I'm going with Andrew Callaway. All Australian, great defender for Richmond. Quite funnily enough as well, the only All Australian kind of Guernsey he got was the same team that Damian Hardwick made as a back pocket as well. So uh, the more you know. Matthew Richardson or Dustin Martin? Whoever asked me that, I can't remember, but fuck you for posing this question to me. Matthew Richardson growing up was my favorite, my favorite Tiger of all time. Dustin Martin currently <laughs> holding that mantle for current players. Oh. One eternity later. If I was going off of who would I rather be in my team, I would say Dustin Martin only because now 
Richo covered a lot of ground for a big man and probably should have won that Brownlow that he came third or second in. I can't remember if it was third or second, but he should have won that fucking Brownlow. I think Dusty can break a game open off his own boot, whereas Richo would still have to have like other midfielders and players kind of come in to help him. So in that retrospect, I'm choosing Dustin Martin. James Hurd or Michael Voss? I'm going with Michael Voss. We spoke about Michael Voss earlier. I think in comparison, Voss had a, I wouldn't say a bigger career, but I think he had a better career. And I'm not really a James Hurd fan, to be completely honest. So it was an easy decision. I'm sorry if that upsets any Essendon supporters, but uh, Michael Voss was one hell of a player. That's not discrediting James Hurd, because he was a good player as well. Some may even say great, but you're just not going to hear me choosing James Hurd over Michael Voss. That's all I'm saying. Chris Judd or Dane Swan? This one is tough for me as well because both could break a game open well and truly. If we're talking about personalities, Dane Swan wins it hands down. They didn't play the same role because Dane Swan later in his career would float down to the forward line and hit the scoreboard a lot more, whereas Chris Judd just loved getting in around the tackle in the into the contest. I feel whoever I don't pick is going to upset somebody. See, if we're talking, who are we talking about? We're talking in their prime as well, because in their prime, I would take Chris Judd, because when he was at West Coast, he was, oh, he was, mwah, he was beautiful. But if we're being honest, I'm going to take Dane Swan. Probably an unpopular pick and an unpopular opinion. But I think the fact that he could go forward and he could transition, I think uh, I think that makes it an easier pick for me. Fraser Gehrig in his prime, the good old G-Train. <laughs> or Tony Modra in his prime. Fraser Gehrig. I think the G-Train wasn't just a cult hero. He... he was a force to be reckoned with when he got rolling. I didn't really get to see much of Tony Modra when I was younger, but I still remember watching Fraser Gehrig run around purely because my old man's a St. Kilda supporter, so I watched a lot of St. Kilda games when I was younger. And seeing Fraser Gehrig dominate that football field, oh, it was good to watch. Andrew McGrath or Hugh McCluggage? Now this one's a good one because both are good young players. I think one has shown his capabilities more than the other. And that's Hugh McCluggage. I still think Andrew McGrath is yet to find his feet properly. Whereas Hugh McCluggage has come out this year especially. And shown that he can hang with the big boys. Not saying that McGrath can't. But McCluggage has done it on a more consistent basis. So I'm going to choose Huey. Would I rather play in four premiership teams. Or be the captain of two premiership teams. As much as I would have loved to have been captain at any point when I was playing football. And my career's not over yet. It still might still might make a comeback at some stage when the big rig gets a little bit smaller. You know what I'm saying? I'm more of a team player. Some would say, you know, that means I rode the bench a little bit. But fuck you guys. That's not what I'm trying to say. But being a team player, I feel I would rather have four premierships under my belt than Captain 2. What award would I rather win? The Brownlow or the Norm Smith? Brownlow. 100%. Why? It means that for that particular year, you have been acknowledged as the best player in the competition. The best and the fairest. That's how it should be handed out. Shouldn't be a midfielder's award like it has been because I feel players like Max Gorn, Brody Grundy would never get the chance to win a Brownlow. But definitely the Brownlow. I'd rather be recognized as the best player all season than just the best player on Grand Final Day because anybody can rise to the occasion on Grand Final Day. It takes a good player, an elite player, to be consistent enough to be awarded the Brownlow and say, hey, you've been the best all year, congratulations. Here's a medal. Chad Wingard or Brad Hill? Going Brad Hill. I think he's close to being unmatched with his gut running ability up and down the ground. Hands down. Might not have shown much this year, settling into St. Kilda. He's had some down games. So has Wingard. And while I think Wingard might be better by, by foot, I think when it comes to just a pure gut running and what Brad Hill can offer in that sense, gets it over the line for me. Gary Ablett Jr. or Gary Ablett Sr.? I told you Jr. would come back and Jr.'s here to stay because I think Jr. has eclipsed his old man. Even though they played two different roles, two different eras, I always feel it is hard to compare two players from two different eras of football. But there is no denying Gary Ablett Jr., without a shadow of a doubt, 
is close to being the greatest footballer to ever play the game. And that's anybody in the history. Feel free to argue that with me, but hey, this is coming from a Richmond supporter. Gary Ablett Jr. is God. Max Gorn or Brody Grundy? I'm going to go with Brody Grundy. I just feel he's a bit more athletic. He offers more around the ground. Max Gorn has done a lot more of that this year. Grundy's done it on a more consistent basis. So, Grundy. Tim English or Rowan Marshall? I'm going to say Tim English because even though Rowan Marshall has probably established himself more currently, I think English has the higher ceiling. He's a lot younger as well, so he's still got a lot to learn. Once he hits his peak... I think he could be the most dominant Ruckman in the competition. Josh Kennedy or Jack Rewalt? Some of you might think I'm playing into bias here. I'm going to say Jack Rewalt. And I've used this ex explanation a few times, but you got to understand what I'm trying to say here. Josh Kennedy is one of the greatest full forwards of all time, without a shadow of doubt. So is Jack Rewalt, one of the greatest forwards of all time. But Josh Kennedy doesn't do what Jack Rewalt does. Jack Rewalt is prepared to push up to the halfback flank and make plays. He's willing to sacrifice kicking a goal himself to set up another teammate. I'm not calling Josh Kennedy selfish. I'm not saying he doesn't pass the ball off. But you don't often see Josh Kennedy leaving the forward 50 to set plays up. He's the one that they want to get the ball to. Jack Rewalt is selfless enough to play a role that he'll let somebody else do that work in the 50. He's happy to push up and make it happen. And he's won more Coleman, so uh, that's an easy little way to throw him over the line as well. Sam Mitchell or Luke Hodge? Great question. Both players I loved watching. Luke Hodge for me. I just loved his tenacity. His leadership was unmatched. Sam Mitchell would have the ball on a string, but I just love how Hodge went about his game. I'm not saying Hodge is a better player overall. I'm just saying I prefer Hodge over Sam Mitchell. Jordan Dugowie or Liam Ryan? I'm going with Dugowie. He's a more versatile player than Liam Ryan. Liam Ryan is good for wow factor, can take great marks, good shot on goal. But I don't think Liam Ryan would be a player that you throw into the midfield and have him kind of pinch hit through there, whereas you can with Jordan Dugowie. who might be a little bit more inconsistent than Liam Ryan, but I'd still back Dugowie in. Josh Dunkley or Clayton Oliver? I'm going to go with Clayton Oliver. I think even though Josh Dunkley is a more clutch player... Clayton Oliver is a more complete player. Connor Rosie or Sam Walsh? I'm going to go with Sam Walsh. Probably a little bit unfair because Rosie's been injured and he's been in and out. But I think Sam Walsh has continued. He hasn't had as big of a year as he did last year. But he has consistently looked like a player who has been in the system for more years than he has been. Whereas Rosie is a flashy player to watch but I think when you compare the two I think Walsh has been more successful transitioning into his second year just my opinion calm down Wayne Kerry or Matthew Lloyd I'm going the duck Wayne Kerry he'll try to pass the the buck to another player and say that they were greater than him but he's going to be humble enough sometimes to admit he's he's one of the greatest full foot he, he, he is the greatest center half forward hands down the best I've ever seen, anyway. Final one. Michael Hurley or Robbie Tarrant? I'm going to go with Robbie Tarrant. I think he is severely underrated. Not many people give him the accolades that he deserves. Very good defender. Both of them are great defenders. But Robbie Tarrant definitely does the things that, you know, the one percenters that he does. And just the way he transitions behind the play, I think he is a better player to watch as well. But the fact that he's so severely underrated, I think I've got to give him his due desserts right here. I think he's definitely going to be selected over Michael Hurley in my eyes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. I hope you guys like my picks. I know some of them might be a little bit controversial. But as I said, if you've got any that you would like to see answered in a future AFL Would You Rather, feel free to leave comments down below. You can alternatively reach out on social media. Those links are in the description. If you don't check out the description, just drop it down, and then you will see Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord. Reach out on any of those. Twitter, preferably, because I'm more active there, but Discord as well. Get on it, because I, you guys have been jumping in lately. We want big things happening there, so I'm looking at you. Yes, you. 
get in my Discord. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It'd go a long way to supporting myself. Cannot thank you guys enough for all that support. And if you do want to see more of this content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I think it, it might be it might be there-ish, I think. Like, down there? Maybe? I don't even know. I'm getting old. I've got fucking white hairs, all right? I'm fucking getting old. But that's it from me, guys. I'm out of here. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.